So we are down to our last step on our unit circle project. We have all of our degree measures here on the inside, and then we filled in our radian measures. And now we need to come up with these coordinates out here because each one of these points that's listed here technically represents a coordinate. Okay, we have our y-axis, our x-axis. Now there's four coordinates that are pretty easy to come up with. The first one being right here, okay? If we have an angle that is zero degrees, and we're talking about this point right here, this is a unit circle, which means that this is one unit, so the point there would be over one, up zero, so we would say that the point is one, zero. The next easiest one to fill in is 90 degrees. That would be our point here. That's over zero and up one. So we call that zero, one. Now I'm counting these points just as if I was on a regular piece of graph paper here. Mm -hmm. And this was one unit right there. So the next easiest one would be over here. Again, there's a point right here. We're going left one. That means I have a negative one comma zero. And then down here, at 270 degrees, it's over zero and down one. So this is the point zero, negative one. So those are the easy ones to come up with. The other ones that I need to come up with, I'm gonna use my triangles to come up with, okay? So first angle I wanna find is 30 degrees. So I'm gonna find a triangle that when I lay it down with the right angle on my x-axis, that the point ends up at 30 degrees. Now it's not that one, it ends up being one of my green ones, I think. And again, depending on how accurately you cut, it might not match perfectly, but you should be able to get it pretty close. So if you look at this one, here's my 30 degree angle. If I have a 30 degree angle, there's my terminal side and my initial side. Why does this triangle make a difference? Well, this triangle gives me my X and Y coordinates because doesn't a point mean you go over some distance and then you go up or down some distance? Well, what is over that distance? That X value or over you are traveling is the length of the long side of that triangle. And that's radical three over two because we already have that measurement. So the X value of that point is radical three over two. What's the Y value? How far up does it go then? It goes one half up. So all these coordinates are related directly to the sides of your special right triangles, okay? How do I know that's true? Because we made the hypotenuse equal to one, and isn't that the radius of my unit circle is one? So it fits nicely in there. So let's try our 45 degree angle, which means it's gonna be on a 45 degree triangle. So let's see, again, you need that right angle on the x-axis, never on the y-axis, always on the x-axis. So here I go. There's my one that matches up. So if I need the x coordinate, that would be the distance over, which is radical two over two. And then the distance up, which is also radical two over two. So that makes life easy. Now I go to my 60 degree angle. I'm gonna get that one, that's my blue triangle here. There it goes lined up. So what's the X value? It's going over what? Over one half and up radical three over two. So if you notice my 36 or my 30 degree and my 60 ones are just opposite each other. And then my pi over four, my 45 degree is the same number there. Now something we need to remember in quadrant one, all of our points have a positive x value and a positive y value. That's how you get a point in quadrant one. In quadrant two, x values are negative and y values are positive because the negative x value tells you to go to the left and then up, which means all my points are gonna be similar except they're gonna have negative x values. Okay, so if I look at my uh, next one, let me do my blue one right here. If I match this guy up, Yes, this distance is one half, but since it's in a negative direction, my X coordinate is negative one half, but the Y value is still going up, so that's still positive, so it's radical three over two. Okay, and then, so now let me find my 45 degree angle. Again, lining up that right angle on the X axis. 
So that's what it looks like there. Again, my x value is radical 2 over 2, but since it's in a negative direction, it's negative radical 2 over 2. The y value would be positive radical 2 over 2. So my horizontal measurement is my x value. My vertical measurement is my y value. Let's go ahead and finish this one off. That would be this triangle right here. So I have a negative radical 3 over 2 and a positive 1 half. So you can see they're the same as the measurements in the first quadrant. They just have a negative x value instead of a positive x value. All right, quadrant three, what happens? Quadrant three, we have negative x values to get to the left, but if we're going down, we also have negative y values, okay? I should also probably label these. This is quadrant one up here. Quadrant two, quadrant three, and then we'll get to quadrant four in just a minute. So let me find these again. My right angle of the triangle needs to be on the x-axis, not on the y-axis, always on the x. Same with reference angles. So here's my first one. I have negative radical 3 over 2, negative 1 half. So that's for this angle right here, negative radical 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Let's see what my next one would be. I need a, right, a red triangle, 45, 45, 90 right angle on the x-axis. I have negative radical 2 over 2, negative radical 2 over 2. And there we go. And then, let's see, I think I have a blue one now. Need a blue one? Yep, to get down to this one. Again, got to match up that terminal side there. So I have negative 1 half, negative radical 3 over 2. Negative 1 half, negative radical 3 over 2. There's my third quadrant, and what happens in the fourth quadrant? We're going to the right, which means a positive x value, and then we have to go down, meaning a negative y value. So let's find our angles. See, I'll continue going around again. Have to be a, the right angle has to be on the x-axis. There's my angle, so a positive 1 half and a negative radical 3 over 2. 45, 45, 1, because remember my 45 is always the one that's in the middle of the quadrant. So I have positive radical 2 over 2, negative radical 2 over 2. Again, how did we come up with these values? We made the hypotenuse 1, and then we used our rules for special right triangles to come up with the sides. So you can always construct these if you need to, though since you've already constructed it. Might as well just memorize it. All right, and there's my last one. Positive radical 3 over 2, negative 1 half. So radical 3 over 2, negative 1 half. So when you take your unit circle quiz, which is next Friday, it's right, um, you have block schedule every day next week except Friday, and Friday you're going to be taking your unit circle quiz. You're going to need to start off by filling in all of the degrees, and then you'll fill in all of the radians, and then you're gonna fill in all of the coordinates. Now, the coordinates look really confusing, but really they're the same numbers being used over and over again. Radical three over two is used over and over again. It's the X value here, it's the Y value there. Changes to negatives in certain quadrants. Same thing with one half. And radical two over two is used on all of the 45 degree angles. It's both the X and the Y coordinate. The only difference is what's negative from quadrant to quadrant. So on your unit circle quiz, I will be particular about what's positive and what's negative in each quadrant, okay? All right, so you should now be able to finish up your project to help you start memorizing for the unit circle. You can also use this as a reference as you're doing homework assignments because there's actually more information that we're going to pull off of that um, on our 18.2C notes. So happy studying.